Is this truly the king of budget whiskey? Today we're doing a review of Wild Turkey 101. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So that is right, we're doing a review of Wild Turkey 101. This is a classic bottle. This is a legendary bottle in a lot of ways. This is a bottle that as you get more into your whiskey journey, you'll hear more and more people praising it. It's also a bottle a lot of people tried in college as shots and ended up hating it for the rest of their lives. But for the rest of us, the majority of us who are looking for just really great whiskey at really great prices, Wild Turkey 101 is just a classic bottle that you have to try at some point. So let's talk about the stats on this bottle. So obviously it's 101 proof, that's where it gets its name, Wild Turkey 101. It is a non-age stated product, but thought to be, by most people, a blend of six to eight year old whiskey, so some pretty decent age. That's often a really good sweet spot for whiskey, bourbon in particular, right around six to eight years old. Mash bill on this is the same that everything out of wild turkey is. That is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. So a middling rye presence, good corn forward bourbon. And of course, the thing we have to talk most about is the price on this bad boy. For me, in my area, I see this often as low as $19.99. So $20 bill out of my pocket, 21 with tax, to get a bottle of Wild Turkey 101. For a lot of people, this is right around MSRP, which I believe is $24. So still solidly in that budget category. But you often see deals on this where it's it's less than that, which is amazing. And so with all of those stats in mind, it's no wonder that Wild Turkey 101 is by far and away the uh, flagship bourbon of Wild Turkey Distillery and one that people are always going to keep on their shelves. All right, guess there's nothing to do now but dive into the whiskey. But before we do that, real quick, just want to ask that if you're liking all the content coming out of the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button too if you haven't already. I've got the goal now to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, and we're going to do a really fun giveaway once we get to that point. So thanks so much to everybody who's already subscribed, and if you haven't already, hit that big red button. All right, let's dive into this whiskey now. Just to talk about the color, it's sort of a light amber color, so not straw, certainly got some depth and complexity to the color and richness. And let's go into the nose now, everybody. Cheers. Yeah, it's such a good mix of sweet and spicy on the nose. The sweetness is a really good dose of vanilla. There is a slight ethanol presence. I think that 101 uh, shows itself a little bit. There's a corn forward nature to it for me. Sort of like a, you can anticipate some thickness on it. So sort of like a corn oil kind of experience. Again, lots of vanilla, good amount of cherry for me on this. And then there's this wild turkey funk. It's a little bit oaky, a little bit nutty. Um, neither of those overpowering, but kind of blending together. And I think a lot of people describe that as like a wild turkey funk, and I get that for sure on 101. But yeah, a really nice, sweet, spicy, inviting nose, touch of ethanol, but overall really good. Let's dive into the palette. It's gonna be my first sip of the day, so here we go, everybody. Cheers. Mm -mm. It's just so, so solid. First thing I'll note is the mouthfeel. It's not the most viscous thing ever, but it's certainly not lacking in that department. So really, really solid there. Then of course, let's get into the flavors that I got there. Um, Good amount of vanilla, just like presented on the nose. A good uh, rye spice, especially in the mid to back palate, and that sticks around for the finish. A good little touch of cherry and oak, so solid there. Maybe the tiniest bit of nuttiness. Um, and this sip, I actually got something really interesting. Um, I would call it anise, which is sort of like a slight black licorice kind of note to it that I get on Wild Turkey 101. Not every sip, but sometimes that's sort of one of the layers underneath everything, and I definitely got it on that first sip there. Other than that, um, it's a little bit spicy, but not overwhelming at all, so really nice proof. 
Let's dive back in and see if we can pick apart some more flavors here on a second sip now that my palate has, you know, acclimated a little bit. Cheers, everybody. Okay. Okay, and that sip, the little bit of nuttiness and the woody oakiness really kind of came to the forefront in the middle of the experience for me. The very beginning of the experience is still that vanilla sweetness for me. Then it went like woody, oaky, little nuttiness. On the back end, there's a little bit of cherry, tiny bit of that black licorice sticking around, and just a rye spice, almost just straight up like rye grain spiciness that lingers on the palate. So overall, almost nothing negative to say so far about Wild Turkey 101. It is just really, really solid throughout. Um, not the most complex thing I've ever had, not the greatest mouthfeel, not the most packed full of flavor, but in all of those categories, we're running somewhere in like the seven, 7.5, eight range out of 10, like really firing well on all of those cylinders. Um, not the most, you know, amazing in every department, but really solid across all departments, which is the mark of a great budget whiskey, if you ask me. All right. Last thing to evaluate here is the finish. Let's go back in for one more sip and see how long that lasts. Cheers, everybody. Okay, so on that sip, just wanna note that it's sort of sweetened up in a lot of ways. There's a, a corn sweetness and a corn oil kind of viscosity to it that I really enjoy. There's a, that sip was a little bit more sweet oak coming across and um, a little bit more brown sugar, sort of turning a little bit more brown sugary for me, which is good. I really like that. And that's always nice to see on a whiskey as it opens up, as it gets uh, more oxygen, does it get sweeter and uh, richer? And I definitely think that Wild Turkey 101 does for sure. As for the finish itself, not super long lasting. I'd call it solidly medium, just kind of like everything else, very solid here. Good rye spice to it. A little bit of that oakiness sticking around maybe a slight touch of that black licorice note for me and some cherry so some fruitiness going on but i would say most dominant there is just this lingering rye spice and that does stick around for quite a long time the other flavors kind of fade off a little quicker but that rye spiciness and uh, tingling on your tongue sides of your mouth that's going to stick around for quite a while okay so those are my full thoughts on wild turkey 101 at least for today I think it is an absolute hitter of a bottle, especially for $20. I can't think of anything I'd prefer at $20, maybe even at $25 or less, maybe early times bottled in bond. But in terms of being worthy of that title of budget king, 100% agree that Wild Turkey 101 has to be in the discussion anytime you're talking about the best budget bourbons out there. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up everything I have to say about Wild Turkey 101 today. Let me know in the comments below what your experience has been with uh, Wild Turkey 101. Are there any budget buys that you'd put ahead of it? Is it your favorite? Just want to know what everybody's opinion out there is on this absolute staple of a bottle. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking really good whiskey and cheers.